Welcome to Dietitian's Dialogue. My name is Jamie Portnoy, your host. Today we have a very special guest, Berto Garcia. Berto is here today to talk about being a vegan. He's going to give us all of the information that we need to know about being a vegan. Hi, Berto. Hi, Jamie. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me on the show, by the way. I'm usually at the other end of the table as the one conducting the interview, so this is nice. Oh, well, thank you for being here today, Berto. We're very excited to hear all about being a vegan. So, Berto, how long have you been a vegan? So, I've been a vegan since August 6th of 2011, so I'm going on my third year now. So, I'm committed to it. Wow. Three years is a very long time. So before you talk about being a vegan, mm -hmm. let's take a step back and, and give us a little bit of information just about you. Okay, so you'll, it won't be a surprise. I'm a dancer. I'm a dance choreographer. Although I get paid to be a playwright, I'm, an actually, I'm actually a playwright. And what's interesting for me is where I grew up, it was fast food restaurants everywhere. You're talking McDonald's, you're talking Burger King, and I went to those every single day probably because I was so busy after school that I would, wouldn't have time to go home. So then I was eating all the, diff all the time. And what ended up happening was as I grew older and started taking my dance career a lot more serious, there was a lot of different joints and aches that started coming up. You know, I started becoming dehydrated or severely tired and just weak all around and my mood was very up and down. So then I became a vegan and voila, I feel a lot more better now. <laughs> well, that sounds like a lot and that sounds wonderful. So um, why then did you, well, we know why you became a vegan. So what is actually a typical day like at, in mm. the vegan world, I should say? Mm, that's a good question. So for me, what I typically do is I wake up and the very first thing I do is I have a large glass of water. Whether it's, I like warm water, so I just drink a large glass of warm water and I take a probiotic so that you can just go. And then the <laughs> second thing I do is I make a green meal shake and I use Karen Calabrese's brand. You can get on her website, karenraw.com. And that particular meal powder contains spirulina, it's got a whole bunch of protein, it's got wheatgrass, and it's just very delicious. So out of that green meal shake, you add in frozen bananas, soy lecithin thin granules, rejuvelac water, which is just fermented sprouted wheat berries, uh, really got kind of like a sweet taste and very alkaline for the body. And then you add in some maca powder, some heavy protein powder, and th that's, that to me is my, my breakfast. So that's what I have a brec for breakfast, just a large glass of a, a green meal shake is what it's called. And then for lunch, I'm actually not a big salad guy, so I don't have a big salad per se. Um, but what I do is I'm like a rabbit, so I put a whole bunch of lettuce in a bag and then I just start just eat eating, the lettuce. eating the lettuce. <laughs> and for me that works because like I said, I'm not a big salad guy. But for dinner, that's where it gets more interesting because I love soups. So we, my wife and I, we make a soup that will last us two or three days. So we make soup probably three times a week. And it can be anything. It can be green pea soup. It can be rice soup with potatoes. You name it. And that would be my dinner. So aren't you hungry then if you're not eating any protein? I'm not because what, I, what some of the snacks that I have throughout the day are protein. So I'll have almond, raw almond nuts, for okay. example. So there's some of the protein that I get. So I, for me, it's... It's actually smaller meals as I as my day continues. So I start off with something small, then I kind of have something large, and then I kind of have something small. So I don't like eating too late, otherwise, as you probably know, you wake up <laughs> kind of like this. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So I uh, tell us then what the difference between a vegan, a vegetarian is. Um, and I'm sure that there's more that we're all missing as well. Yes, there's, the list is pretty long about what you can do and what you're considered in terms of labels. But a vegan is someone who doesn't eat any animal products. And to take it a step further, they don't even wear leather or any, any they don't wear wool, they don't wear fur. No leather? Why no, no leather? leather? Because it comes from an animal and oh. the animal has to die in order for us to get the leather. So no leather. and. In some cases, as I mentioned before we did the interview, some vegans don't eat honey. Honey? And, and I'm one of those vegans because bees do have eyes. Honey? I don't <laughs> think I can go without any honey. <laughs> One teaspoon of honey per day is actually good for us. Yeah, that's what they say. That's the say, same, same with apples. Apples, apples per day. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Absolutely. <laughs> 
So, okay, what else then? And so, yeah, so a vegan is just someone who doesn't eat any, any animal products. A vegetarian, however, they can still consume dairy products. So they still eat their cheese pizza, they still eat cow, cow's milk. Okay. And so a vegan, what they do in order to not be so in a bubble, they simply substitute. So instead of cow's milk, they'll have hemp milk or almond milk, mm -hmm. coconut milk, soy milk. There's, uh, there's quite a few out there. And instead of, you know, a, a piece of steak, they'll have a mushroom steak, which, you know, at least to me, it tastes the same thing. It tastes like the same thing. If, if you have it with some asparagus, it'll taste the same. So they just substitute like crazy. Then you have different categories, like I think it's called inoctovarian. Yeah. They still consume uh, eggs, I believe is what it is. Sure. That's, my wife's is, is one of those. <laughs> She's a vegan who has an egg every once in a while. So the list, like I said, goes on. And of course, you have your omnivores. They eat the meats. They eat, they eat everything. So very, very good. Then there is a, there is a wide variety. Um, and in being a vegan, do you ever go outside of your box at all, or are you just straight, you know, only follow exactly mm. what you follow, and and that's pretty much it? Well, it's interesting that you ask that. I've been in situations where I'll meet someone and uh, we'll go to a social gathering event. I do a lot of those, and they'll say try this muffin and I know for a fact that that muffin per, probably is made with milk or eggs mm -hmm. so I'll pretend I have a little piece yeah. and then I'm sure. mm, so good because I don't want to come across like someone who's a snob that's actually the hardest thing about being a vegan is you don't want to come across like you know you're too good to eat this food or you're better than anyone else because you follow this particular lifestyle everything else to me would be the easy part that's that's very interesting. And and how about going out to eat in restaurants? And, mm. and do you find that, you know, what is you know your experience when you're going to the actual restaurant? That's a very good question. And if you don't mind, I want to give people a free resource that they can go to. It's sure. called HappyCow.net. HappyCow.net, and it's a website. If you travel a lot, like I do, then you can just type in your zip code. And if whether you're in France or in Illinois or in meat eating town of Texas. It'll give you a list of the different restaurants there are that are either vegan, vegetarian. It'll even give you a list of grocery stores that sell natural products. And so for someone that goes out like I do, and I like to go out to restaurants a lot, I do plan ahead, just like you recommend your patients to do. And I do look at their menu, especially if I know I'm going to a place that has both options, both vegetarian and non-vegetarian, non-vegan options. I do plan ahead. Um, but for the most part, I go on happycow.net I look at the list of restaurants in my area and I try one of them out and 99% uh, of the time, I'm never wrong. <laughs> the, the restaurants are so delicious in what they, what they serve. And does happycow.net also give you uh, grocery stores as well? It does, like it'll give you a list of, let's say, Whole Foods. Hey, Whole Foods is just 15 miles from where you're at. I strongly suggest Whole Foods. You can also do a co-op service with different people where you can say, hey, Jamie, do you mind if you and I you know, pitch in and we can get a box full of vegetables every week? And that those vegetables can range from cucumbers to celery, and the list goes on. So you can do a co-op. That's, that's one of the main things. And of course, during the summer especially, go to your farmer's market. You know, that's one of the best things to do because you'll get to meet the farmer who's planting this organic product and you'll say, hey, tell me a bit more about your farming practices. And they'll tell you whether, and you'll decide whether or not it's ethical from speaking with this person. Very interesting. What have you learned from being a vegan? Mm. And, you know, how did you become a vegan? And I know you've kind of expressed that in a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, prior, but I want you to kind of go into that in a little sure. bit more. So, as I mentioned before, I've been a vegan since August 6th of 2011. I saw a film called uh, Earthlings, and that film tells you exactly, it gives you a behind the scenes footage of what really goes on at the slaughterhouses, what really goes on in the fur industry the scientific research industry because if you're putting a cosmetic product out there they have to be able to test that and so you'll see the video footage of these rabbits just being tormented and, mm. and so much abuse the cows you know just waiting knowing that they're about to be slaughtered seeing their fellow cow being slaughtered and I saw that film and it's about two hours and I just was doing this the whole time and I saw that and I, I knew right away to become a vegan I said I'm not going to participate in that anymore I'm going to be a vegan 
and the next day so saturday i woke up and i told my wife honey we're going vegan and of course she's like oh my god we just bought all these groceries and i said well we don't have to throw it away we can call my friend josh and i ended up donating all our foods because we had eggs we had organic bacon we had the whole list um so we gave him all the food and we be, we've been vegan ever since wow and if i if i may add the only time i've ever fell off was when i went to a restaurant i won't say which one because i still go to this restaurant <laughs> and i order i ordered their pasta with their marinara sauce because i knew their marinara sauce didn't have any meat and they did give me the they gave me the meat sauce instead so i took one bite i looked down and of course, and I, realized and I realized I like, oh, no, I didn't get mad. I did end up suing them. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I didn't get mad or anything. I just because I ate meat all the time growing up. So it sure. wasn't like me being upset for anything. So that was the only time I did fall off. And then to answer the second question that you were asking, what is the biggest thing that I learned? Honestly, the biggest thing I learned, there's two things. Number one, there's a big connection between the food you eat and how you feel each and every single day. Same thing with the actions that you take every day. And for me, food is just such a big factor in determining what my day is going to be like. Am I going to be crabby? Am I going to be happy? Am I going to be mellow? Especially, uh, I'm sure you know, if you consume sure. a lot of sugar, you know, it's, and then you <laughs> crash. So I'm very conscious about, about the choices that I make. So that's the, one of the biggest things that I learned. And the second biggest thing that I learned is have respect for everything. And I'm not just talking about have respect for you as a person or as a human being. I'm not just talking about having respect for who I am as a person. I'm talking about having respect for your environment. If I'm in the middle of a, in the city, walking behind someone and they throw a cup on the floor, now I know consciously to be able to pick that up and throw it in the garbage because I'm, I'm aware that what you throw out there comes right back. And so that would never have happened, by the way if I didn't become a vegan because you do you make decisions differently you vote differently sure you talk to different people that are just so warm and loving and kind and you're introduced to this world that's just incredible and loving and, and easy flowing well thank you and and that's you know great information and and I think that we'll all be able to take this and and reevaluate what we eat mm. and whether it be you know changing to become a vegan or even just making sure that we watch what we're eating on a day-to-day -day basis so mm -hmm. I appreciate all of this great information thank you and if I may say one more thing sure. for someone who is kind of interested in being a vegan but they don't necessarily want to jump right in or, and do it, uh -huh. I, what I strongly recommend is they just substitute their products. So like I said earlier, instead of having cow milk, they have almond milk yes. or you know coconut milk if yes. they like something a lot more sweeter. You don't have to give up all these. I still have ice cream. It's vegan ice cream yeah. and it's a raw vegan ice cream, but it's, it's, I still eat the same thing you would eat or someone else would eat. Just modifying just, it. Just modified and it's the vegan version. Very good. Well, thank you, Berto. No problem. I really appreciate all of this great information. No problem. Thank you for having me on. Well, thank you again. Remember, if you embrace nutrition, nutrition will embrace you. Keep liking us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Remember, this is your show. We want to hear what you have to say. So email us, tweet us, or like us on Facebook. And again, we will answer your questions. Have a great day.